Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 where today we are going to be looking at the best techniques for launching the car off the line to get the best race start possible. Now we're going to be taking a look at the various different start types within Project Cars 2, the techniques for the various different start types depending on a couple of various different settings and then also the different actual penalties and a little bit of rules and regulations in and around the actual race starts and we'll be looking at purely just launching the car off this line for this first of a two-part kind of episode. Uh, we'll be doing a second episode which I'll probably do next week which will be more about the actual first lap mentality, your approach down to turn one and basically how to survive and give yourself the best chances of making it through the first lap. So this episode we're just purely going to be looking at launching the car off the line and giving yourself the best chance to have the cleanest run or possibly even game positions going through the first turn or first sequence of corners. Now, before we actually get into the techniques, over in the options gameplay section and then under the authenticity tab, if you scroll down, you have an option for manual rolling starts. Uh, this is one of the gameplay options where if you choose your start type to be a rolling start, you can choose to have manual control over the car. If you want the AI to have complete manual control over the rolling start because you're not too comfortable with it, you can set this to no and that will have the AI control it up to the point that the lights go green. At that point you will then be handed over manual control and you will be able to obviously resume and take control of the car to then go racing. But if you want to have complete manual control yourself you can set this option to yes. There is a two second window at the very beginning of the rolling start phase which is under AI control. Once that two second timer is up you will then be given complete control of the car for the rolling start phase. You obviously go and approach the start finish line you only obviously get the light countdown sequence and then once the lights go green that is when you'll begin racing. Now for actually determining the start type in Korea it's all predetermined in the code and everything of the actual motorsport that you are doing it will vary from motorsport to motorsport where some motorsports and race series will be a standing start others will be a rolling start it's all down to the rules and regulations and you can't alter that however when you come to custom event whether it's online custom event or single player custom event you can go ahead into the race options and scroll down to the bottom you'll see a start type option there and you can flick between the standing and also rolling start. If you select the rolling start you also get the additional option of doing a formation lap if you wish. This option is not available if you are doing a standing start. So let's now actually take a look at launching the car off the line and the various techniques for it with the various different start types. Now we'll begin with the standing starts and if you are using automatic gearing then you have it very very easy. All you simply need to do whilst the lights are red and doing the countdown sequence just put your foot on the throttle that will automatically shift the car up into first gear but the AI will hold you there in position and you won't roll or move from your grid spot then just put the amount of throttle input that you want to launch the car off the line with. Generally you should be kind of putting it onto full throttle and then once the uh, lights go actually green what the AI will do is simply lift off the brake and you'll start moving and then it's just down to you to modulate the amount of wheel spin depending on the drive rate of the car. Obviously if it's got traction control you could probably keep your foot in fully flat however if the car doesn't have traction control and the wheel starts spinning up you will need to ease off the throttle and modulate that wheel spin to try and get the wheels to regain traction and give yourself the best acceleration possible. That's obviously going to apply for all scenarios when launching the car off the line but just for automatic gearing it's very very easy you don't really have to do too much and worry too much at the actual start itself. If you're using manual gearing however but using an automatic clutch there's a technique that you can do that will get you a good start providing that you get the timing right. Now what you actually do is you keep your foot firmly down on the brake during the red light sequence shift up into first gear and then just before the green light comes on you plant the foot on the throttle and give it a load of gas and then as the lights go green you ease off the brake or drop the brake and come off it completely and that should launch the car. Now the reason why you need to get your timing right here is because the moment you start applying the accelerator the automatic by clutch option is going to start re-engaging the clutch and you have about half a second window once the clutch actually re-engages and bites into the, into the drivetrain once again and the car will actually start moving. And if you get this timing wrong you're going to end up with a penalty. 
However, if you get this right, you'll get an absolutely fantastic start and an absolutely fantastic launch off the line. So now we're on to the final technique with launching the car off the line with a standing start and that is using manual gearing and also a manual clutch. Now providing that the starting grid is on a flat surface and you're not on a hill or an incline or anything like that, what you can do is just put your foot down on the clutch to fully disengage it, shift up in first gear and then you can use the throttle and once the lights actually go green you then ease off the clutch to about 50% so they start to engage and you start rolling and moving and then as you continue to accelerate you can then completely come off the uh, clutch pedal. What you don't want to be doing is just completely dropping the clutch and coming completely off the clutch pedal uh, fully. That will just drop all the revs and you'll bog down and you won't really go anywhere anywhere too quickly. So what you want to do is obviously modulate the clutch input, get it to about 50% and you'll start moving quite nicely. Any higher than 50% you'll just get a lot of slip and you'll just uh, basically keep revving the engine and not really going anywhere so you want them to be binding and biting quite nicely without actually completely dropping the clutch and fully engaging it and there being too much force and friction and it'll just cause the engine to bog down you lose all revs and lose all momentum. Now obviously if the starting grid is on a slope whether that's an incline or a decline you obviously need to hold the brakes. So the moment that you shift up into first gear, the car is going to start rolling in either direction. And if you move too far, you're going to go. You're going to go get yourself a penalty. So what you need to do is obviously put your foot down on the clutch, shift up into first gear, but also hold the brake at the same time. You then uh, it is possible, depending on your pedal setup, is obviously put. Uh, your right foot on both the brake and also the accelerator. Use the amount of accelerator that you want. Then once the lights actually go green, obviously release the brake, go heavier onto the throttle and do the same again of easing up the clutch pedal and engaging the clutch, obviously making sure that you get the nice amount of bite, uh, bite so that the revs don't completely drop and the car doesn't bog down, but you also obviously get in the right amount of engagement so the revs aren't just building up and you're not really going anywhere. So those are the techniques for launching with a standing start. And if you actually jump the standing start, the penalty that you're going to get is a drive through, which is the main reason why you need to hold the brake when using the manual clutch and also manual gearing uh, when on a slope or on a hill, because the car is going to start rolling. And if you move too far, you will get a drive through penalty. And likewise with the manual and auto clutch, if you uh, go onto the throttle too early and you release the brake too early or you basically just start, uh, jump the start and go before the green light, you will get a drive through penalty. So you need to be very much mindful of that. Obviously those using automatic gears, whether it's automatic clutch or uh, manual clutch, it's you pretty much you're locked to auto clutch when you're using automatic gears it doesn't matter uh, you, you simply could just put the amount as much throttle on as you want the car isn't going to go anywhere until those starting lights turn green so you have it nice and easy so that's all the stuff on standing starts let's actually move over onto the rolling starts and if you've got the manual rolling start option set to no you obviously have ai control you don't need to worry about doing anything you won't take control of the car until the lights actually go green and then you can go racing however if you do have the manual rolling start option set to yes you're going to have control once the two second timer at the very beginning of the rolling start phase is over and there's a one way that I like to start with my manual rolling starts and that is as the light countdown sequence actually starts and begins starting countdown and going through the various red lights that is actually putting my foot lightly onto the brake and putting the accelerator down to full throttle application. Now there are two main reasons for this. The first is it's much easier to control the speed with uh, using more or less uh, brake application depending on what the cars are doing around me in the rolling start phase. Obviously if I'm there having to lift on and off the throttle I could be off throttle at the point uh, of the lights going green whereas obviously having my foot fully down on the accelerator at 100% and then just using the correct amount of brake input to maintain my speed, avoid making contact with the other cars around me. All I'm simply having to do is lift off the brake once those light goes, lights go green. I've got my foot fully on the accelerator ready for that moment. The second reason for it is also having actually 100% throttle application there and 
already at that time. It's already demanding all the power from the uh, engine for the acceleration. If the car's got a turbo, it will have the turbo nicely spooled up for the moment that the lights go green. Again, if I'm using just partial throttle and controlling my speed that way and not using the brake, when, I, when the lights go green, I'm obviously going to have to jump down onto the throttle that is when the power is then going to start being demanded and I'm going to have to wait for the turbo to spool, spool up whereas obviously having my foot fully down on the accelerator and demanding that 100% throttle application I'm going to be demanding that power and demanding the uh, power from the turbo if the car actually has one and have it already spooled up for that moment that the race actually begins so it gives me the best acceleration as soon as those lights go green to then start pulling away and usually you can gain a place or two off the line uh, to some of the other guys around it who are just kind of there modulating uh, modulating their throttle input obviously you're going to have to modulate your braking input with this to make sure that you maintain your speed and don't go above the 120 km per hour limit which I believe is 80 miles per hour that is the limit of the rolling start if you go above uh, and break the speed limit you will have a few seconds to get back down underneath it if you fail to do that you will get a drive through penalty likewise if you are above the speed limit once the lights go green you will also get a drive through penalty for that as well the other penalties that you can get during the rolling start phase include five second time penalty for each piece of contact uh, with another car during that rolling start phase so if you have multiple uh, contacts with other cars or the same car you'll rack up a five second penalty for each piece of contact that you make with another driver then you can also get disqualified for gaining positions on cars that are in your train you have a countdown timer to give the position back however if you fail to do that you will then be disqualified but this only applies to the cars in the train that you begin the rolling start phase in. So the cars that are to in the other train, either on your left or on your right, are irrelevant. It's only the cars directly in front and directly behind you that have an impact with regards to this position gained penalty. So that is going to conclude it for this episode. Basically covered everything that I wanted to cover here. Like I said earlier on in the episode, next week we'll take a look at basically giving yourself the best chances of surviving turn one and then also the surviving the first lap and basically how to approach the first lap, the kind of mentality around it, whether you go aggressive or whether you go conservative. This episode, I purely just wanted to cover giving yourself the best initial start that you possibly can. And a kind of nicely coincides with the next episode as well because providing that you get a good start off the line or at the very beginning of the rolling start phase they'll also help and give yourself a, a little bit better chance and possibly give yourself some better options for uh, what to do when approaching the first turn or first sequence of corners so that is going to conclude it for this episode hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully you learned something if you have any comments or questions feel free to leave them down in the comment section below i'll try and get back to you as soon as i possibly can if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you've been enjoying all the content that i've been putting on the channel recently consider subscribing to the channel if you had any issues or didn't enjoy the video either give the video a thumbs down or leave any uh leave any constructive criticism down in the comments below and i'll try and get back to you on that as well but otherwise thank you very much for watching guys hopefully i shall see you again in the next episode but in the meantime have fun and take care